Good morning, everybody. Welcome to OSC Medical. Uh, today is our second um, uh, live feed. Um, again, we've got Sharon Friedman here with. Uh, oh, life balancing therapies. Life balancing <laughs> therapies, yes. It's been a long day for me already, so know, it's, yes. Said, yes. So. And also our little uh, lovely technology. <laughs> okay, we'll get it, we'll get it like we get, so we're not all crazy next time maybe. Hey, you know, at least today we started a little bit sooner than we did That's last true. week. So we know there's, there's a bonus to this. It's, <laughs> we're getting better. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a learning curve, but we're learning. Yeah, it this is, is good. It is. You know, I think today, after the long day yesterday, I could use some definitely good breathing movements. To oh, good, good. So I thought what I'd do, i start today, is the lecture intro and mm -hmm. then go to you. So uh, last Tuesday, when we, when we started this, we worked with breath. And I'm going to uh, do that again with him and, um, and re-demonstrate the breathing and talk about the breathing just to kind of go into the next thing, which is, oh, it's not up there, breath and movement, and how they, it, 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 it really helps our bodies function better, it helps reduce in, uh, chances of injury, whether we're doing everyday stuff or yoga. And, and then um, it helps with the nervous system. So it's a really kind of multifaceted thing. So I'm gonna just jump right into reminding everybody that, and if you uh, need more information or longer explanation, go back to the first one. So this is gonna be a, like a very quick, that when we breathe, when we, breathe we have um, our lungs are uh, connected to our spine, actually by the rib cage, and, they, and, the, and the ribs are, con are connected with intercostal muscles, and the diaphragm is uh, underneath, and when we, the brain needs, uh, gets a message from the body, it needs oxygen. So the brain, can, and this is very simple, the brain uh, makes, uh, connects, says to the diaphragm, pull down, and or activates the diaphragm to pull down and then within that happening the air gets suctioned vacuumed in to the lungs and the rib cage the rib cage expands outward and upward like a little air balloon and then when the the lungs are full enough and again that is another thing of how how, um, how deep you can breathe how well your how healthy your lungs are all that kind of stuff like that the brain gets a message, okay, my lungs are full, we need to stop breathing or stop inhaling. The diaphragm actually pauses for a second and then it starts to retract back up into a dome-like position, pushing the air up and out. And, and so, you know, with that in mind that the inhalation is in and down and exhalation is up and out, we think about movement because Breath moves the spine, in and down, expanding, up and out, and then the spine moves the limbs. So it, it seems very simple, but it's very uh, intricate and complicated. So jumping into that with just that small explanation, there's another thing is that, um, and this is, comes from my teacher, Gary Krafsow, that we set an intention to move all the time we don't think about it. I mean, when you go to pick up a p heavy piece of furniture or something, if you don't set an intention to engage your body and pick it up, chances are you're gonna harm yourself, right? I 100% <laughs> agree with that. It's, you know, they tell people if you're lifting, you know, people that haul furniture and stuff that I think this is where points like this are very important for them to understand. You know, whether you're picking up your kid, whether you're picking up a bag of dog food, whether you're picking up, you know, something that weighs more than 10 pounds, 15 pounds. You know, it came to the realization of myself when I, when we did that the other day, I was like, yeah, I didn't know it was that complicated. I didn't know that, that breathing made that big a difference. But I think for not only myself, but for all the viewers that are looking, and this is one thing that you definitely want to keep in mind. You know, Sharon said last week, you know, you don't, you don't think about breathing all day long. You just don't do that. But... <laughs> More importantly, when you're going to actually lift something up, you know, to better protect yourself, these techniques are very important for you. Yes. So, 
an exercise that we learned in our in, in my training of Vinny Yoga and I want to explain a little bit about Vinny Yoga again is Vinny Yoga is a little bit different from other yogas because it's got a therapeutic aspect to it. Vinny Yoga is about working with people therapeutically to ch change the structural issues that might be causing problems. But the problem, the thing is, is you have to become aware of that structural issue to change it. So when you connect your movement with your, your breath with your movement, your movement with your breath, you slow everything down and you start to notice where you might be moving differently. You, your hips might be not even enough. Um, your shoulders aren't correct. And I know that when I get on the floor and do uh, certain movements in for yoga, my hand, one hand is always in front of the other. And I notice that and shift it back because I don't just get down and do it. I actually sit down and make the intention to look at my body and think about where I am and what I'm doing because we want, you know, over time, like water dripping on a rock, if we keep doing something that's not good anatomically in our bodies, eventually something's going to break down a back, a shoulder, a neck, you know, and, it, and, and, you know, like the straw that broke the camel's back, you're never going to know that last moment, that last movement that's going to shift like it did with me with my I have spondylolisthesis and my fourth vertebrae has moved in front of my fifth and my third. And I don't know what I did. I really, you know, I don't know what I did, but I did something and it was, and I ended up not being able to get up and walk for a couple of months. I mean, it was extremely painful. Long story, but, but you know, I didn't just keep on, you know, take a pain pill and keep going. I laid for, I sat and, and tried to figure out what it was for over four months. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really careful about what I do now. I'm very intentional about what I do because I don't want to be back in that position again. So breath and, and movement are really important because it'll tell you how your body's doing. So I'm gonna have Bobby, I'm gonna have Bobby, um, and this is not the chairs I wanted, but it's okay. I'm gonna have Bobby turn sideways. Standing? Yeah, like that. I know, you're gonna sit, I'm gonna stand. Okay, so he's going to come to the edge of his chair and he's going to put his feet, legs, uh, feet in front of him. So, you know, nice, po nice posture. So, and, and, and posture is a little harder actually when you're sitting on the ground than standing because you've got a fixed feature here in your hips because you're sitting down. So um, he's going to, so he's really doing very nice and tall and he's going to relax his shoulders. Relax, relax, relax. relax. Okay, I'm going to go to sleep if I relax. Okay, <laughs> he's going to breathe through his nose. Okay, I'm gonna breathe through his nose. And we're gonna just review the breath, the breathing that he's going to, um, and I'm gonna put my hands here so he can feel it. He's going, I'm gonna put my hands right on the side of his rib cage and he's gonna gently through his nose like he's sniffing a beautiful flower. He's gonna to try to push the ribs out. Yeah, there you go. And notice how as he does that, his chest lifts and rises. And then as you exhale, it gently floats back down. And he might feel that as he lifts and rises, his belly is lengthening. It's not pooching out, but his spine is getting longer, right? And your belly is almost lengthening, getting taller. Do you feel that? Okay. All right, so that is like, you know, review of breathing in a nutshell. He's going to, one more, expand in the ribs and lift. And as he exhales, he's gonna lift from the pubis bone up to the belly button and keep lifting pubis belly button to the just below the rib cage, and then he's gonna relax the spine as he exhales. And relax just the chest. The, the, he wants to keep the belly muscles in and, and corseted as he exhales. And then as he inhales, he's going to expand his chest, release the belly a little bit, release the belly a little bit, and then pull it. So we always wanna keep, I'm gonna get over here. I always wanna keep our, our spine, as we inhale, we're gonna release a little bit, but as we exhale, we're gonna lift back up. Because exhale, people tend to go like that, but actually exhale is a lengthening up. And so it's a lot more work, and it's really what, it really helps um, stabilize the lumbar spine and stabilize the spine as a whole when we exhale. And that's why um, when you, ex you exhale to go down, and that helps lengthen the spine, and you inhale to come up, and that you know pulls everything and lifts you up. It's just so I'm gonna have him face the camera now. And we're gonna play with breath and movement. And this is this is 
fun. Hopefully you'll think it's fun if you want to do it along. He's going to take his hands like, like W's, okay? And he's going to begin his inhale, so his, his um, ribs are going to expand, and he's going to take his arms out like this, just a little bit, and as he exhales, he's going to pull them back in. Do you feel that? Yeah. So as, you, as he inhale, the chest is expanding and rising, so his arms are, are going out and lifting up. And as he comes, as the chest goes in, his arms come down and in. I'm going to add something. So now I'm going to have you begin the inhale and then let the movement happen. Finish the, stop the movement and finish the inhale. And now begin the exhale and then let the movement happen. Stop the movement and finish the exhale. Do that a couple times. So you're really concentrating on your breath and your movement, right? Yes. Try to, try to keep, it's called the envelope of breath. Try to keep your movement within the breath, the envelope of how big your breath can be. So you can't really extend very far if you don't have a big breath, right? Right. And feel the difference if you go past that limit, what happens, how your chest feels. Does it feel like you're... It's heavy. It's, it's like, it feels incredible tension. There's tension there, right? But as long as you stay within the breath, there's more of a calming effect to it, right? Okay, put your arms down. And for those of you who are doing this along with us, close your eyes and just feel the effect of that breathing, that the spine feels relaxed, the, the, uh, the breathing is soft, the mind is soft, and it really, how the breath is really connected. You can feel how well the breath is connected to the nervous system. By, and he's been very stressed out this morning, so it, it, it did kind of calm you. Yeah. The other thing is, is that you're so focused, you're in the moment, because when you're breathing and you're thinking about your breathing and how far you breathe and how far you can move, you really can't think about anything else. You're very centered, so it's a very centering practice. So let me think what it next I want to do. Oh, I want to do this, okay, so people say, so, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing weights, I might, you know, I might exhale to go out and inhale to come in, and therapeutically there are reasons to do that. Maybe you want some resistance happening um, and there's no resistance there's no resistance when you did that right it was there's no resistance so I want everybody to play with this take your arms out okay and you're going to take an inhale don't move now exhale and take your arms out and inhale and bring it back in do that a couple times and feel how your ribs are there's a resistance in your ribs and there's a both ways that gets a little you know, stimulating in your brain yeah, away. Yeah. You now go back. You can definitely go, feel huh? it. You can definitely feel the difference. Okay, so then go back to the inhale and it, let your spine move, and then let your arms move from that, and then you know, and let it come back. So let your, you know, let the. It's a natural movement of your body to do that. So you're going with a natural movement. It's much more calming um, and uh, relaxing and easier, right? Yeah, feel the difference. Very much. Okay. Very much. So, um, again, there are reasons to do it opposite, and there's, you know, not always, it's not don't ever do it. No, there are reasons for it, but do it consciously if you're going to do it. Don't do it unconsciously. So he's going to stand up, and we're going to play a little bit more with um, breath and movement. So when, you know, the proper function, or the proper ways of moving. So when you inhale, it, it, you stand, it's a standing up position, right? So I'm going to have you turn sideways again. And you're going to bend your knees a little bit. And you're going to, you're going to inhale, you know, in and down. And you're going to exhale up, pull the belly in. Pull the belly in, bend your knees, and bend forward at the hips, joining at the hips. Drop your, your chin. Drop right there, stop right there and bend your knees just a tiny bit more. And notice how when he bent his knees, I got a little more length in his lumbar spine, where it straightened your knees. And it goes hard, feel that? And release your knees, and it softens. So if you've got a tight back, you do not want to bend down with straight legs. You want to bend your knees as much as possible. So coming up, he's going to set the intention of coming up. He's going to engage his thighs. He's going to inhale, belly, and then there you go up. Did that feel easier to come up? Mm -hmm. And then do it again. Exhale, pull the belly in, take the tailbone away from the head, bend the knees, bend the knees, bend the knees, bend the knees, and there we go. And then, and then engage the core, pull the belly in, 
and lift up. We always want to have the belly in, no matter what. But notice how the belly released as you came up, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice. How's that feel? And I want you to do this. Come back in. We're going to do that. Come up one more time. We're going to do the inhale. We're going to do begin the inhale and lift up into your extension. And then finish the inhale and now begin the exhale and then begin to bend. Bend the knees. And don't go, only go as far as your exhale will let you. Stop right there. And then begin the inhale. So listen to your breath and only go down as far as you can stop the movement and finish the exhale without gasping. We're going to do it a couple times. And you'll notice that as you do this, you actually begin to lengthen the breath because the spine gets longer. And you can only breathe, you can only go as far as your spine will let you, and you can only breathe as deep as your spine will let you. You feel that as you're starting to get more spinal length, and you're starting to get more a deeper breath. Mm -hmm. I love it. And then stay. Stay and just let your body relax and breathe. Feel the inhale lengthen. Feel the exhale lengthen. So you can feel the down going, spine going, extending and actually releasing. And then inhale one more time, come up. Okay, how'd that feel? It's good. So I'm gonna do one more thing, if those of you who are doing yoga. So you inhale your arm, no, just one arm. You inhale your arm up, all the way. And then you exhale and laterally bend. Feel that? And then you inhale back up. And you exhale laterally bend. So you get your length, and then the exhale kind of extends the, the as you, because you're exhaling up, you get a little more extension in your spine to get that lateral bend. And then come down, we're going to do the other side length, so to make it equal. Inhale up, so you inhale, raise the arm up. Exhale gently, just bend to the side, not too much. Feels good? And hold that on, and then bring your arm down as you exhale. There you go. So, how'd that feel? It's good. <laughs> and it's, it still amazes me that something so simple could mean, could make that big a difference. Oh, it's huge. You know, it just... is, it is. So we, you know, again, when you're working with breath and spine, you're working with the, with the, the uh, spinal cord that holds all the nerves that go from the brain down to every, every cell, every organ in your body. And if you're working in sync with your breath and your movement, then the brain starts to balance and go into more of a parasympathetic, which for those who don't know, parasympathetic is the rest and digest that after you've run, which is the fight and flight, um, you sit down and you rest and your body re it recovers, rest and recover. And we really want to be in that rest and recover cycle of our brain at least 50% of the time or more. We only want to be in our fight and flight or our sympathetic is when we have to get up in the morning and go take a shower, you know, get us going. But when we sit down at a, at a table to eat, when we sit down to do our work, we don't really need all of that energy because we're sitting. So the staying in that more parasympathetic mode, the calm and relaxed, is going, it, it, it lowers your inflammation. So that lowers um, all kinds of illness problems because inflammation lowers your stress, which lowers your inflammation. And inflammation is like we all know now is like one of the major causes of most illnesses in our society. So one more thing we're gonna do is, um, well back bend, a little bit back bend. So when you, when you yawn, what happens? Give me a yawn. You open your chest mm -hmm. and you kind of so, right, so as you yawn, you keep tend to inhale and we lean back just a little bit, inhaling, and then the exhale brings us back forward because the belly pulls in. The inhale, remember, we lengthened our spine in the belly. Exhale, we're going to pull the belly in and pull us back. So the belly is what really pulls us in and the belly releases to come back. So that's kind of nice. And you're only going to go as far as your spine is going to let you, right? Yeah. And one last one, one last. So we've got the five that can have a tip at the very edge of the chair. The very edge of the chair, come all the way out. So your sit bones are like almost off the chair. 
There you go, legs together. Thank you. So we've got the five boots of the spine. Axle extension, which is just up and down. We've got the, the back bend. We've got the forward bend, that's three. We've got lateral, four. And the fifth one is, I call it rotation, not twisting. Because, and I wish I had my little um, uh, skeleton with me, but his hips are gonna stay fixed. They're not gonna move. And he's gonna rotate his rib cage. And the only real place that we can rotate is right here. The junction between the right of between the lower, the upper um, lumbars and the very lower rib cage uh, thoracic muscles are where we can rotate from. Otherwise, these need to be stable because they're uh, protecting our lungs and our heart. And if they get messed up, then we've got problems with lung and heart issues. The uh, pelvis has the hips with the sacrum and the pel the ischial to the side, yeah, the ischial tuberosities. Um, and we want those need to be stable because that holds our reproductive system, our elimination system, um, it's, and it's the keystone of our posture. So if that gives a rhyme, as anybody has ever had SI joint problems, you know how painful that is. So we want to keep that engaged. So he's going to lengthen all his muscles down and really push his sit bones into the chair, lift his pelvic floor up a little bit and pull the belly button in and hold it there. Now just lift and pull down, hold your breath. And then he's gonna inhale in it, keeping that down. He's gonna inhale in and down, so lifting up. And he's gonna exhale. I'm gonna put your hands on your, your um, like you're here, on your, so you have, you know. And he so said, inhaling in and down, exhale, lift up. And he's going to turn his belly button toward the camera. Not his head, not your nose. Let your nose follow your belly button, it's really hard. Because we tend to go, you know, right? So he doesn't have much twisting motion. He, doesn't, his, he shouldn't have much control of his revolving muscles. They come across here and here. And those are the muscles, like someone's taking a, rib, a ribbon and turning the ribbon. Feel that? And, you've, and you have really have to use your abs and all your muscles here to rotate that rib cage. Feel that? And hold it there. Breathe. I love, I love this. And then you're going to... Inhale, lit, inhale, and then exhale, unrotate. Now feel the difference in the right and left side. Even in your brain, there's a big difference. So we're gonna do, get him even. We're gonna inhale in and down as you push, you know, as you ground down into the floor and engage all your pelvic muscles. And then, yeah, there you go, pull it in and lift up, and, but not, don't use your nose. <laughs> use all these muscles. Yeah, keep, keep your nose in, you know, in line with your belly button. And then when you, if you want to, you can, once you get as far as you can rotate, then you can take your nose and turn your nose, over, turn your nose over your shoulder and finish the rotation. Feel that? Because we don't want to use our neck because it will we'll, we'll hurt our neck. But if you use your nose and take your nose towards your shoulder, it rotates the deeper parts of the these musculature of the spine instead of just the outer part, and then the spine doesn't quite get there, and then release. All right, how'd that feel? That's very enlightening. It's so you, know, you notice how we use the breath to inhale and engage everything, and then we use the breath to move everything, and then we stayed and and engaged. And so um, I hope everybody enjoyed. And, and now when you sit quietly, close your eyes and sit quietly, there is much more enlivenness to your spine and to your mind. And so we're going to do one more thing to uh, all the, the movements we did with the spine. We're going to bring our spine back to alignment. And this is, if you were on your hands and knees, it'd be called um, Chakra Vakasana. I call it tabletop to child's pose. It's not cat-cow. So he's going to inhale and do a little bit of a spinal extension back. And he's gonna exhale and just release and gently round the lower back. No, not round the upper back, but try to just bring the belly in and a forward bend, yeah. And then he's gonna inhale back up and, and straighten the arms actually, straight, you know, kind of push, yeah, push and straighten your arms and lean back. Chin down. And he's gonna then exhale, bend the elbows and gently round this round. Like that. So you get a nice long spinal round at the back, and then you get a nice 
spinal lengthening in the front. So it's it's a spinal it's a spinal rock. And then exhale. Pull the belly in and lengthen that lumbar spine. So begin the inhale and move. Stop and finish the inhale. Begin the exhale. Stop right there and finish the exhale. You don't have that long of an exhale. How'd that feel? Close your eyes and just take a moment. Let your body relax. And just feel the residual effects of the focus that you had with feel, you know, watching the breath and then beginning the movement and then doing the movement very calmly with intention and awareness that hopefully you can feel the relaxing, calming effects in the nervous system. But think of what it does for your organs that if your nervous, if your brain is that relaxed, it's sending relaxing messages down to every part of your body and they're starting to go into that healing mode. Healing is probably one of the most important things because you don't really, you don't really realize, you know, yeah. when you damage yourself or that you damage yourself. And in our line of work, you know, as a podorthist or even as a yoga instructor, you know, we're dealing with people that are hurt. We're dealing with people that damage themselves, whether it was picking up something that were running, you know, just movement. <laughs> you know, people damage themselves. So I can honestly say that a lot of your time is spent in recovery. You know, whether it's I'm sitting at a computer and I'm at, I'm, I'm at this all day, you hurt yourself. Yeah. You don't know how much you hurt yourself because a lot of times we can write it off, this is just what I do. Yeah, but the repetitive motion, you know, repetitive motion, you wear the same muscles. So this is where I think that, you know, going through these, these breathing techniques and process that it's just a way to help the body heal that much more. And the awareness of where the um, structural, you know, the structural uh, unequalness is, and then finding, you know, professional that can help you uh, bring it back to equalness whether it's a physical therapist or a uh, yoga therapist or a personal trainer or a chiropractor. I mean, there's people out there that understand, you know, that once you can tell them this is my problem or I think this is where my problem is, and, you know, then you can solve it. And, you know, the thing is, is that we live in a, I love the fishbowl uh, example where this fish is swimming around in a bowl and the fish says, you know, oh, um, where's the water? Because... We, li you know, where's the stress? We live in stress. We just, we just don't understand that we're living in stress and how stress feels. So when you start doing a practice like this, or even a restorative practice, and that's another, you know, yoga, is learning how to calm down the nervous system and go into this more relaxed. Then when you, you're able to feel the difference between relaxed and stressed. You know, knowing the difference of what it feels like. But if you're constantly stressed, you actually relaxation feels really weird. In fact, you know, if my husband would be relaxed, he goes, I don't feel good. I go, why? He goes, I don't know, I just feel really tired. And I go, well, have you ever thought maybe that's relaxed? <laughs> and, you know, he recently picked up something. And he came home and he said, I hurt my back somewhere. And, I, and he didn't, couldn't figure out what he did. And I said, okay, fine. You can't figure out what you did. At least you know what you did. You know it hurts. And so he was exercising three or four times a week. And I said, don't. I said, just don't exercise. Don't, don't do anything for a couple, you know, at least a week. And it really was hard for him. But about a, 10 days later, I said, how does it feel? He goes, oh, it feels, it feels really good. <laughs> I mean, imagine that, doing nothing, letting your body rest. That's just so counterintuitive to everybody these days. And he started exercising slowly again. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to work, I'm trying to work, you never can work with your family, I'm trying to work with him with more postural improvement and, you know, working structurally so that when he goes back in, He's not re-injuring. And that, you know, that's the thing is that once you've injured yourself, you really have to stop. Your body is saying, stop, I need rest. It's what it's saying to you. And, and there's no, you know, just whatever reason for our society, rest is just like the worst thing you can do. That's just, uh, we- But you, but you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a big thing of, you know, people being aware of their body and what it's actually telling you. Not a lot of people do that. Yeah, and this. And until something happens, you're like, "Oh, that hurts." Oh, now you're gonna listen to me, right? Now you're gonna listen <laughs> to me. Sometimes they so. don't. They turn it off even more until right. until you're on the floor and can't get up. And um, yeah, no, it's this 
yoga is very interoceptive, and that's another thing I thought about maybe talking about another time is proprioception is feeling yourself on the chair where you are in time and space. Interoception is if your heart is racing. Some people, you know, you, you know, sometimes if you're more interoceptive about it, you can tell when your heart starts racing before it really starts racing, or if your hip is bothering you before you end up in surgery. <laughs> yeah. You know, and some people just turn their interoceptive. We don't maybe don't even know. We've never taught been taught interoception, and and be able to feel what's going on to be able to correct it. That awareness, awareness in our bodies, and that this practice, I just, I, I you, know, as you can tell, I love it because it really is so um, healthy that it, you know you can take it into you can take it in using with the weights. You can take you, you can use this for weights. You can use this for running. You can use this for cycling. Just the properties of the breathing and the awareness. You don't have to do yoga to do this. You know, just awareness to go pick up. You know, you're right. Your child or a piece of paper. <laughs> Many of backs have been taken out by a piece of paper. <laughs> and that's something. And that's something. Something simple like that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I mean, this is this is really great. I mean, I've you know I've got a lot of friends that are bodybuilders or you know, they're strength training. They're at the gym. You know, this is a really good segment to do for them to remember because a lot of times we get caught up in our own lives and what we do that we forget about the little things. But I can tell you that in life, it's those little things that make a big difference. Yeah, I do. Well, this has been fun. I think it's. it's been, I think we're, we're you know, yes, <laughs> yes. wrapped up here. I hope everybody enjoyed that information. And if yeah, yeah, you know, and went through it really fast because we only had very little time to go have a lot of information so if you look at it again hopefully you get a little more and a little more out of it and uh, i hope you enjoy it and it brings ease and relaxation and health to your life and if you would like to get a hold of sharon you can contact her at um my website is lifebalancingtherapies.com my email is lifebalancingtherapies at gmail.com and um, you can get a hold of me there Either way. Thank and, you. And thank as you, a podorthist and master fit of compression garments and all the little things that I do, I'd love to see everybody. So if you have any questions, feel free to come, to come and see us here on the corner of College and Quivera. Um, uh, it's oscmedical3printing.com. Um, contact us, leave us a message, let us know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very Cheers. much.